Let's talk about the new data component system and item stacks. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back and tell ones more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at the new data component system that well, was introduced in the latest version of Minecraft. And basically, it sort of is a successor to the NBT data system, but not quite because NBT data is still readily used everywhere around in Minecraft. And the data component system is actually backwards compatible because there's some really interesting, cool stuff. If we press shift twice and we look for the data components class, components, well, I have to read this correctly, components, there you go. That is going to be this one. You can actually see the different data components that exist in vanilla. And one of them, the first one here is custom data, which in theory you could literally just use this custom data over here. And if we go into this control left click, you can see it has a compound tag, which is NBT data. The only thing you really need to do if you want to still use compound tags, right? So NBT data, you can literally just use the custom data over here. But that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're first of all going to actually make a completely or a more or less custom data type. Right, that's just going to save some coordinates. So what I want to do is when I have the chisel item right here, we're just going to expand this a tiny bit. And what I want to do is when I right click on a block, I just want to also save the block data on it and display that as a hover text. Literally all I want to do, it's nothing too crazy, but it is an interesting showcase of the components. So let's just take a look. So in the tutorial mode package over here, when I right click new package called component. And instead of there, we need to make a new Java class called the mod data components class. There we go. And this is going to be quite interesting. We could also call this the component types, but I think that this is fine. And this will have a public static final deferred register because we actually need to register those of type data component type of type question mark. It's going to be our data underscore component underscore types equal to the deferred register dot create. And we can actually see it suggests us the data component types over here. Absolutely. Tutorial mod mod ID. And there we go. And here we're going to have a, of course, public static void register method with an I event bus, all event bus. I'm going to take that particular deferred register asking in the event bus right here. As always, of course, all of the code is also available to you down below. So no worries there at all. And then here we're simply going to call the mod data component components dot register passing in the mod event bus. And then we can now add our data components. And this is extremely like useful. It's really good. Uh, in this case, we will have a helper method that's just going to help us a little bit in registering them. It's a private static and then angle bracket T and then a deferred holder. Very important. A deferred holder of type data component, data component type of type question mark. And the second parameter here is data component type of type T. Looks a little crazy, but it will get revealed in just a second. This is going to be the register method with a string name. And then uh, the second parameter is going to be a unary operator of type data component type dot builder dot builder of type question mark. No, of type T actually. And this is the builder operator. The incredibly useful NeoForge documentation has helped me figure this out because that was a little bit crazy. I will link this down below as well. But here we're just going to return data component types dot register, passing in the name parameter over here, and then a supplier of the builder operator dot apply, passing in data component type dot builder, this time the method. And then after the second closing parenthesis, pulling the build method, and there we go. Once again, this is going to be the same setup every time. So you're going to have this particular class, and then you can just add multiple different deferred holders on however many data you want. In this case, we're going to add the one for the coordinates, and you can see this. So I'm going to make a public static final deferred holder of type data component type of type question mark. Second parameter of the or second like type of the deferred holder is going to be the data component type of type. And here we're putting in what type the data component is supposed to be. So if we were to check this, right, we have this ST and theoretically, as you can see, it can be anything that you want. However, the component type has to be like based on a codec, right? So that means uh, in theory, we could put in an integer and then put in an integer codec. We could put in a which we're going to do a block parse and then put in a block parse codec. We could even put in theoretically a custom class 
And as long as that custom class has a codec, which we obviously would then have to write ourselves, we could still put that in. In this case, this is going to be the coordinates here. I'm going to register this under the coordinates. There you go. And then the second parameter is going to be the builder and then pointing to builder. Dot. And you can see we have three different things that we can do. We can do persistent, network synchronized. We can build this as well as cache encoding. Highly recommend it to, let's say, we're just going to get the persistent over here. And in the persistent, we're going to do block pause dot codec and then ending with a semicolon. And you can see it, it works. That's it. That's all we need to do. And now it basically knows, aha, the data component that we can add now via this coordinates is going to be a block position and it's going to be serialized via this codec, which, well, I mean, basically, if we actually take a look at this particular thing inside of here, pretty sure we can see this. It's an in-stream. It looks very complicated. That's just the nature of codecs, sadly, uh, that they are a little bit more complicated than the serialization was before. But now how do we use this? You will say, wait, this is, it's so simple. Yes, it is really freaking simple. And it is so simple, in fact, that in the use on method, right, where is it just going to do what we basically need to get the item stack. So last tutorial, we've talked about block states and block state properties. So we had a, in the block, right, we've seen this in the our mod blocks, right, we have one bismuth lamp over here where we're creating one instance, one object of the bismuth lamp block class However, we can set down a million bismuth lamps and they're all different because they're all block states as soon as they are inside of the world. And the same thing goes with stacks and items, right? So this particular chisel item over here, if we look at it, I'm creating this one time over here, right? The class is created one time to an instance of, a, of this particular class. However, if I have three different chisels in my inventory, they're all going to take different durability damage because they're all different item stacks. Right, very important once again. The item stack is the instance of the item, and that is a very important distinction. So we need to get the item stack to get this in the use on method. We're gonna get the context that get item in hand. And this basically is the item stack. We can actually hover over this and you can see there's an item stack over here. And here, literally super easy, calling the dot set method, and you can see we want to give it a data component type and then a value. So the data component type is gonna be data mod data components dot coordinates. And then we're giving it the actual type, which is a block position. So context.get click position. And th literally this line, we have now saved our custom, quote unquote, custom data, which is called coordinates on this particular item stack. That's literally what we've done just now. That's how easy it is. You might say, that's this is insane. This can't be the case. Yes, that's literally it. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm whenever we have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just append a hover text if there is some data on there, it just reads it out. And it is as easy as this. If here we once again have access to the stack, right? So we're going to say if the stack that we have in that we're hovering over dot get, and then we're going to get the mod data components dot coordinates. If this is not null, because this is nullable, we can actually double check this as well. If we control left click on this, we can see this is nullable, meaning that if there is no data of this particular type, on this stack, it's just going to return a null. So if it's not null, we know, oh, there is some sort of data on this on this particular stack with a type of coordinates, right? So with a with a with the data component type, we're then going to say tool tip components dot add. And what in this case, I'm just going to do a literal trans a literal over here, last block changed at, and this is going to be stack dot get. And once again, we're going to get the actual data this time, mod data components dot coordinates and that's it it's going to immediately create this uh, make this it's going to make this a block pause and then add it when we hover over the chisel that's hilarious that is all we need to do so we literally only need to know the set method as well as the get method in the set over here as well this is also nullable meaning that you can pass in a null over here if you want to reset the data right so if you're like oh i want to delete the data literally just pass in a null and you're good to go that's it that is the whole craziness of data components. They're more or less pretty simple. Like I said, you have a bunch of them in the data components class over here that is well, possible for you to use. Mainly the custom data is going to be quite interesting because that is, well, literally going to just have a compound tag, which is going to have all of the same stuff that we had before, meaning we have the bytes, the shorts, the, the, all of that stuff. You can literally just put that into the custom data and that is going to work from the out from the get-go without even needing to make this right that's the cool thing in this case i think this is pretty cool but yeah there you go that's literally all we need to do so let's jump into the game 
and see if it works. All right, finally back in Minecraft, and you can see I've got some chisels over here, and of course, right now, I haven't clicked anything, so nothing has happened. However, if I right-click on any block over here, and I now hover over this, last block changed at this particular block position. This is obviously going to change if I change it somewhere else, right? So now it's, let's say, minus 26 and minus 105. If I go over here, now it is ni minus 19, minus 98. And of course, the other ones do not have it because once again, that is the difference between the item, right? The item class, the item and the item stack. These are all different stacks. And we've only done this for the one that is that we've right clicked with, right? And we can do this for all of them and then we're all gonna have different values, obviously, because, well, we clicked different blocks over here with them and that is really freaking cool. I really like the new data component system. It is more straightforward than I thought, right? I really thought at first, oh, this is gonna be quite complicated. I think it's really nice. And yeah, that is some data components added to our project, pretty cool. Like I said, the NeoForge article on the data components will be linked in the description as well. That is a huge, like, just such a good resource for this. It's, it's actually incredible. But we'll go to this next time in this video. We'll talk about custom tools. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.